chilling tales for dark nights. Want to make sure you never miss a Chilling Tales for Dark Nights video again? Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to turn on notifications. When I was younger, my family moved to one of the nicest neighborhoods in Peachtree City, South Atlanta. It was gated with a nice lake view. Everything was beautiful. The grass in everybody y'all was all the same shades of green and the same length and the trees and hedges were all shaped in unison. This was truly a dream house in a dream neighborhood. Well, at least from the outside. The first night my parents found letters in the basement dating from 1984 to 2001. With the letters, they also found a memorial for a family with candles and hairbrushes. It was spooky. Who does a memorial in the house like that? It's almost like it was their grave. My parents didn't think much about it, but it freaked me out, so. I remember my best friend slept over one night and we watched movies and went to bed around 10, which was late for a five year old. I remember this as if, as if it was yesterday. Usually I woke up two or three times throughout the night but this night, it was like I was in a coma. I slept so deep. I ain't wake up till around 11 the next morning. When I woke up, Samantha was gone. My mama said that her parents picked her up around eight in the morning. The next day when I saw her, she was not Samantha. She looked like Samantha, but it was not her. Her mannerisms was different. Even, even the way she talked was different. She just wasn't the active little girl I remember her to be. She looked like she had something to tell me. Her face just had this, had this worry look on it. At the time, I didn't know what to do, so I just hugged her. But at the same time, I was scared of her because I knew it wasn't Samantha. A few months later, Samantha moved to another state and we eventually lost contact. My mama was six months pregnant at this time. I remember my dad would leave for work and she locked the door behind him with a deadbolt and sliding chain lock. This was when we realized that something was wrong in the house. My mom walked into another room and we could hear the deadbolt sliding out and the door just straight up open. She would lock it and it would do the exact same thing again. She even put something in front of the door so it wouldn't open, but it was like someone was pushing the door. She was freaked out. She called my dad over and over until he finally came home. When he got home, he smelled gas and found out it was a leak. He said the fire could have got started. Me and mama didn't realize since we had been there with the smell all day. She said the house knew what was going on and that's why the door kept open. Dad said the gas just had us kind of high, you know. That's why we was confused about the door. Easy for him to say when he wasn't there. After my sister was born, my grandma came over for a month just to help out with the baby. The night before Thanksgiving, my grandma had went to the kitchen to warm up my sister's bottle. She tripped and fell over hitting her head which caused her to have an aggressive seizure. As my dad called 911, a big black figure came into my room wearing a trench coat, a big cowboy-like hat, and he didn't have no feet. He was just floating. He came out the room, stopped, looked at us, and then flew out the window. Man, after this, we stayed in a hotel for a week just, just basically trying to make sense of what we had just seen, you know. As much as we wish we could, we couldn't stay in that hotel forever. We had to go back to the house. We had to. And we wrote down escape plans just in case anything else crazy happened. It was hard being so young and scared. 
it bothered me so much, I started acting out in school. My parents understood my pain, though, because they was taking it even harder than me. The night we returned, the house ain't had no problem welcoming us right back in. Every night, every night I felt as if someone was sitting down at the foot of my bed. I would get up so scared and I, I would put, try to put the blankets over my head and just, and just pray that it would go away. One night, I got the courage to stretch my foot out to see if I could feel anything, but I didn't. I only felt the bed raise up like somebody just got off of it. After a while, I think my prayers worked and I started to feel secure around the spirit. Whatever it was, it was following me to other parts of the house as I got older. If I was washing dishes or, or taking a bath or brushing my teeth, it felt like somebody was with me. And every now and then, they would brush against me. It was like I had a, a, like a guardian angel until I got visited by the man. He started showing up in my nightmares first. He was a tall, tall man with no face, like an old school gangster hat, long coat, just standing in my backyard. Every night though, he would get closer and closer to the house. I would look out into the yard in a dream, but I wouldn't see him. I walked closer to the window and I could see him climbing up the side of the house. I hated that house. When I told them about my dreams, they felt my fear because they was having the same dream. They just hid it to stop from scaring me. My parents decided to sell the house. Even when they put the listing out online, it would get deleted every time. The for sale sign in the front yard would go missing too. Mold started to grow, so we couldn't sell it until we fixed it. The house was sabotaging itself. Man, I couldn't take it no more, man. I decided I would face the man before he got to me. I walked into the backyard one night and stared at the moon. It was bright and full but the clouds started to swirl around it and it got real dark. I could hear the grass crunching under someone's footsteps. As they got closer, I saw the shape of his hat. Little one, why are you not scared? You came just in time because tonight I was gonna crawl into your dreams the night I was gonna make you scream like you never have before. He started walking towards me. I dug deep. Man, who was them people in the basement? That family? Did you hurt them, bro? Shut up, child. And don't worry. Your family will join them soon enough. I turned and ran from him and ran into the basement and grabbed the shovel and started digging where the family's memorial was. I felt the shovel hit something hard. I kept going and I saw bones, but they were small like a, like a teenager like me. Then I saw them staring at me in the shadows. Your family will suffer because of you. You let your imagination run too wild. I came back at him. You hurt these people, didn't you? They ain't deserve this. I called the police and they dug up the bones. They said it seems to be a family that had them been missing for a while. Their suspected killer died in prison. They showed me pictures of the killer. He wore a big hat and a trench coat. The next night I went back to the backyard. The moon disappeared behind some clouds. I motioned for him to come on out. He did. I said, I feel your pain. <laughs> but even in death, 
You still are too proud to admit your guilt. You could have stayed away, but you led them to me on purpose. You wanted your crimes to come to light. He turned away from me and looked back and said, If I would have known then what I know now, I would have lived my life differently. But I didn't. But you will. After his words, he descended into the ground. Chilling Tales for Dark Nights.